Thank you for tuning in to The Careful Diver. Today's video is about why you should take an advanced or deep or whatever it's called with your particular certifying agency course before you extend yourself beyond the open water uh, certification limits. Now, you know, the certification agencies have a limit. For PADI, it's 18 meters and 60 feet once you pass your open water uh, class. And in order to go up to 30 meters, you have to go through the advanced open water class. In order to go to 40 meters, you have to do the deep diver course. And whatever it is, there are parallels and equivalents in your particular certificating agency. And the question has come up, why? Why should I bother? Like, I'm just going to go deeper. So the first answer, and this is not part of the five because it's obvious, is look, you, you've always been told that you need to dive within your certification limits. And that's just the rule, right? That's the rule for liability purposes, for insurance purposes, for your safety. Okay, it's not a law, it's not an obligation, no one's gonna put you in jail if you exceed your limits, but it's unsafe to do so, okay? But I wanna be more concrete than that, right? Like you shouldn't because you shouldn't is not a very helpful answer. So here are five reasons that I personally would strongly advise that you should go take that advanced course and why it's worth taking that advanced course. Okay, so if you just take in your open water class, you are limited in depth and wrecks as well as other reefs and more beautiful critters are available deeper. So there is a reason to want to go deeper. You get to see more stuff. And the reason we do this is so we can see stuff. So it makes sense that you'd want to do that. But here's the, here are the five reasons that you actually should go and take a course. The first one is this. Narcosis. You probably already know that at 79%, which is the percent of nitrogen in your regular air in your tank, at 30 meters, nitrogen becomes narcotic. And what does that mean? It means it makes you feel drunk, okay? But just like drunk people can be happy drunk or angry drunk, narcosis can hit people differently. You can be an anxious, paranoid, angry, narcos person, or you can be a happy, euphoric, everything's great, let me pull my regulator out of my mouth kind of narcosis person. And knowing that ahead of time helps you calm your mind, react appropriately, and not put yourself and others in danger. One thing that I do with my students when we go deep is that we really spend time feeling what it's like to have narcosis. If they are at 30 meters, and it doesn't always happen, that's the other thing, it's hit or miss. Some days it happens, some days it doesn't. But when they are at that depth, and they are with someone who is um, trained, has their safety at heart, and can help them in case of a problem, it helps to get used to the feeling, kind of understand how it affects them, so that they are better equipped to handle it if and when it happens again, when they're out on their own with buddies, right? When they're out in an unsupervised situation. I do it with my own kids. I took my kids down to 30 meters for their advanced open water course. And we went over all our hand signals and I said, okay, so I'm going to be asking you if you have narcosis. And then I want you to tell me if you have narcosis, but you're okay, or you have narcosis and you're not feeling, this is not good. Okay. And that's exactly what happened. We went down with my two kids, my two older boys, and hilariously, this is what happened. One of them, I asked him, right? I said, hey, do you have narcosis? And he's like, he goes, oh, he goes, oh, I have narcosis, but I'm okay. I'm like, great, that's wonderful, perfect. And then I asked the other kid, this is literally how the exchange went. I go, hey, question, do you have narcosis? And he looks at me like this. No. Obviously, he was narked, <laughs> but that's the thing. Sometimes you don't realize it's happening. You just have really delayed responses, like really delayed and impaired cognitive abilities. And so it was actually a great example because we were able to go back up to the surface and we talked it through and I said, you had very long delay. He goes, I didn't realize. But then his brother is like, yeah, but that was really good for me to know. Like if somebody is not responding, then now I know like, hey, it's not terrible, but you and me, we need to go up a little, okay? So that was a great learning lesson and it's something they did in a very controlled environment. And that's what I would encourage you to do as well, like experience that in a controlled environment, okay? 
The second reason that you should take a deep dive or an advanced course if you want to go beyond those initial limits is air consumption. You will be surprised about how fast, I mean just how incredibly fast you go through air. You're used to being up there and maybe your tank lasts you 45 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour even. 30 meters, that's not the name. That is not the name of the game. And so being in a controlled environment with someone who is in charge of both monitoring your air and creating a dive profile that is going to be conducive to an enjoyable dive while also keeping in mind that your consumption is going to be much higher than it used to be is really important both for you to learn that and for you to do this in a safe manner, okay? Number three, your buoyancy is going to be completely different. Everything is getting crushed way more than it was at shallower depths. And that means that the air in your BCD and the air in your neoprene bubbles is going to be crushed, which means that you are going to be far more negatively buoyant than you normally are. Being able to understand that, experience that in a controlled environment is important to maintaining safety. Because if the first time it happens to you and you're out in the wild with a buddy or someone else, okay, and all of a sudden you start kicking, 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 like, oh my God, I keep putting air in my BCD and it's not going anywhere. And I, you might panic. Not only you might panic, but you will also be using a ton more air because you are kicking like, a, you know, like crazy to keep yourself afloat because you're so much more negatively buoyant. And so we want to make sure that you are learning how to properly manage this increased negative buoyancy with an instructor by your side. The fourth reason you should take a course is because of decompression sickness, decompression illness risk. When you go deeper, your NDL is shorter. And you know that theoretically, but living it is very different, okay? You could be very used to bopping around at 15 meters with your NDL pegged at 99, as in you could basically be there forever. But the moment you start hitting that 25, 30, 35, 40, which is the absolute minimum, right, for non-decompression recreational divers, you are really pushing that NDL. And you do not want to find yourself with a decompression obligation as a recreational diver without having had the proper training and proper procedures to manage that. And that's, that's serious business. That is an actual danger. So you want to make sure that you have an instructor. I do that very often. I'll take their computer. I'll be like, hey, have you seen your NDL? Like, we, we don't have a lot of time. Like, keep an eye on it, right? Like, these are the things, these are all of these extra pieces of information you have to insert into your bandwidth, your mental bandwidth, when you are managing a dive when you're going deeper. And then there's a fifth reason. And the fifth reason is nerves. People get nervous. People go deeper and they get nervous. And what being nervous does is that it pushes you closer to the limit of panic. Now, you may not feel it. You may feel perfectly fine, but that nervousness is there underlying it. And so if something goes wrong, you are closer to the breaking limit. And if you are closer to that limit, you are closer to panicking. And if you're closer to panicking, you're closer to hurting yourself or people around you. And so being in a controlled environment with somebody who is properly trained to help and assist you while you get used to it, while you start incorporating this extra tension is a good thing and it's part of managing diver safety. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, please like it and I would love to hear from you. So feel free to reach out and ask me questions or ask for advice or ask me to troubleshoot or ask follow-up um, questions. Thank you so much, bye.